Welcome to Taking the Leap into Commercial Real Estate, the number one podcast dedicated to helping you get comfortable in the commercial real estate arena and equipping you with the latest market news, insights, and strategies you need to make informed decisions about investing. Now, let's get into today's episode with your host, Angel and Brittany Gonzalez and John Jerry. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to Taking a Leap in a Commercial Real Estate Podcast. Uh, today, I have joined here with my co-host, Brittany Gonzalez. I'm Angel Gonzalez, your host. And we actually have the pleasure uh, to have uh, Scott Kidd here with us today. And so just right off the bat, I'm going to have him kick us off. So I'm just going to ask him, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what it is that you do in your background? How you doing, guys? Uh, thanks for having me on. My name is Scott Kidd, um, uh, Yachty Real Estate Investors, um, involved in uh, commercial real estate, uh, multifamily mostly. Um, been doing it about three to four years in the multifamily space, but uh, before was uh did a little, some single family, but realized that uh, to get where I want to be, um, multifamily is kind of where where I need to be. And I've, I've enjoyed it because there's a lot of people that I've met that are um, very team oriented. And uh, my background is I'm a yacht captain. I've been yacht captain for about uh, close to 25 years. And uh, it's very team oriented. Um, we're, you know, without, uh, without a team or a great team, the boat doesn't go anywhere. And that's the same thing with multifamily and commercial real estate. You have to have everybody in the right seat to be able to, uh, get to that. And, uh, I kind of fell into being a yacht captain, but it ends up being, uh, um, a passion and you never know where life is going to take you. And it's the same thing with multifamily real estate. I, you know, it, uh, led me to multifamily and, uh, because in on the yachts and stuff, it's it's uh, kind of a fickle business. It's um, you can go from hero to zero in one day, and uh, you know here today, gone tomorrow. So I've always been searching for something and some type of additional revenue streams. That uh, if I lose the job, then uh, you know I I don't have to sweat so much to jump into something that I may ne- may might necessarily not want to do. So and that's you know, how it all kind of came together for me. You know, I'm originally uh, from Jamaica. My dad's Jamaican. My mom's American. And, uh, you know, I, I uh, was back in Jamaica and a friend of a friend uh, asked me if I wanted to work on a boat. And I uh, really had lost my business that year. Um, lost, got laid off from my job. It was a 99.com bust. And I was back there and things weren't working out. So I borrowed the money from the ticket, borrowed the money to get to Florida and uh I was originally thought about going back but uh I never looked back um I stayed in Florida stayed on the boats and eventually that brought me to uh multifamily um which they like I said they're they're very similar in that there's a team everything's a team you have to have the right person in the right seat to to get the right team to get everything going Wow, Scott, that's really, really interesting to going from uh, being on a yacht to joining into the multifamily. So you got not only both uh, land and water. So yeah. you have to both of them. <laughs> well, on the on the boats, it's not good if you find land. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to go. <laughs> if you awesome. find well, we do we do call it finding real estate, but it's not in a good way. You're high and dry. <laughs> Well, I'm going to ask you, can you share a significant milestone or a turning point in your career that shaped the direction that you were going to go? So what was it that made you continue to move the momentum forward? Um, Something that, that and this is a recent uh, event in the last year or so, I've kind of focused on asset management and well, I'm not kind of focused. I have focused on asset management and raising capital and I've joined Raise Masters with Hunter Thompson. And it's been great because uh, I highly recommend is something that I recommend is putting yourself in the room with people that have done it before. And if you have to buy yourself in or put yourself in, just get in because I, I'm now in a group of people that have raised billions of dollars. Um, and uh, 
they, they'll gladly, like a lot of people in the multifamily uh, uh, space, they will uh, tell you how they did it and gladly help you how, how they, you know, and show you and, and go through it step by step if you just ask a lot of times. And uh, as we all we all need help sometimes, you know, everybody does. And it, it's great because people are very helpful. And, you know, I for me, I, I want to make sure that other people um, – know that these opportunities and these types of things are available to them and with that that can help them figure out their way you know i i, I gotta tell you i, I can appreciate uh, how what you're sharing but you know i gotta get into this yacht thing i i don't get the opportunity to really ever talk to a yacht captain really and so i gotta ask like what kind of skills and experiences do you feel uh lead to you uh, the things that you need to be successful in that arena, like what what was it that kind of shaped you in that well, in that way? Uh, what kind of shaped me was uh, uh, it shaped everything in my life. Was um, I was and am uh, fortunate to have great parents and great role models in that regard, and just leadership and uh, having kind of treating it like a a family. You know, because the crew is, we, we all have to get along. We all have to live together as well. So leadership and um, just uh, general communication skills are mm -hmm. things that carry throughout all of it. Because if there's a miscommunication, things can be misconstrued. And on the boat, when we're underway and stuff, we're on our own. We have to be able to sort things out and we have to do it at uh, a rapid pace because things can unravel quickly so we have to be able to solve problems and troubleshoot uh, in an instant and you have to be able to be able to make those decisions you have to have clear communication wow, good point well obviously i would say you've definitely learned a lot and you've been able to share it with others so have you had any mentors along the way and would you be able to elaborate on the, that relationship I uh, yes, I was actually on on the yachts. I was lucky enough to um, align myself with the first captain that that hired me. Yeah. Um, he taught me a lot, and he showed me a lot of things. Uh, same same lessons that I use today, and I use some of them in multifamily as well. Because I there was one time where he was teaching me how to dock the boat, and I was you know coming in too fast and doing a whole bunch of stuff and. And he said, hey, just stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, no, but I need to, I'm going to hit this. And, and he said, well, no, stop. And I said, and so I stopped. And he goes, and I said, yeah, but I'm going to hit. And he goes, well, what do you need to do? And I was like, uh, go in reverse. And he goes, well, go in reverse. And then and I said, oh, so he said, look, if you're ever doing this, just if you get flustered or frustrated or whatever, just stop. And just take a breath, detach. And I've, I've I've heard a lot of other people say those kind of things. I believe Jocko Willink in his uh, leadership book says, stop and detach for a second. Just take a breath. And then just look at what you really need to do. What's the next step? Forget about everything else. Yeah. What's the next step? And that works in everything. That is carried through to me in all facets of life, really. Some, you know, with my kids, with, you know, with just other business situations, just if you're feeling flustered or overwhelmed, just take a, take a step back, take a look at what's actually happening. And then usually you can get a, a large, you know, a high level view of what's actually happening. You know, that's actually really great insight. I, I right now having, a, I have three girls under three and one of them, I'm trying to teach the word stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, stop, please. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of one of those people. I'm like, maybe I need to make sure she goes. Out <laughs> yeah. <with me." laughs> yeah. Well, you know, with it's, it's funny because I have uh, two teenage uh, daughters now. They're just about grown. And, uh, you know, it's funny that their personalities come through even when they're babies and they're, they, they, they don't change a whole lot because uh, they're still very much how they were when they were the ba you know, when they were babies, it's pretty fascinating. Um, uh, just something that, uh, I've, you know, the way they were when they were babies are similar to how they are now. It's, uh, pretty amazing. What are their ages now? 18 and 17. 
17 yeah. and 18, I think, right? 17. Is that what you had shirts about? Yeah, 17 and 18. Yes. Wow. So you're you're a busy man. <laughs> yeah, it's busy. It's busy, but it's a good busy. Well, actually, a great busy. Sorry. Better. You need to elaborate on that. That's so, uh, you know. Yeah, well, kids are well. kids are a great thing. It's great. We have, we have definitely a lot to learn because all of our kids, I'm sure they have a unique personality. That is for sure. From baby to toddler age. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's with parenting, it's always, we're always learning and growing because it, uh, you know, the kids teach us, teach us a lot of things, mainly, mainly patience. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm sure you have a lot to, um, a lot of memorable events that took place, but is there a memorable or an interesting project that you've worked on, um, whether through the multifamily, single family, um, that made it very unique? Pretty much a lot. A lot of it is always a learning and growing experience. Each, you know, the only thing I can really say about all of them is each each deal is unique in and of itself. You know, that's the thing that I love about it is because it's very challenging. Each one takes a different set of solutions. You know, um, (laughs) that's something that I've learned is is that everything has. Everything has uh, caused, you know, different types of solutions to come up with everything that we have going on. Wow, I can't, you know, I can't imagine being at on the on a on a boat and being able to do like different things. Like, I, I, I'm one of those guys who like just always visualize the world from the sea, and all of a sudden I'm like, there's actually someone that lives that life. I just can't imagine it. <laughs> yeah, it's yep. You but, always could be a boat person. Yeah, it's a unique uh, lifestyle. I mean, I love being on the water. I love uh, the ocean. I mean, it's some for some uh, reason it just has always resonated with me, and I, I you know, it it, uh, it just kind of it's my calm place. For me. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and ask you, like, have you had anything like what has been the most major or like craziest experience that you've had out in the sea? Like, if I, I just have to ask, like. <laughs> oh. Probably, uh, uh, probably a hurricane and stuff like that. That's not, it wasn't, uh, you know, we were, we rode out Hurricane Isabel in the Chesapeake. That was many years ago, uh, probably 15 or more years ago. I, I can't remember the exact date, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, we had just put the anchor down and myself and the other guy there, we just, uh, then started blowing over a hundred plus across the deck so it was uh, we were tucked in pretty far up the river but uh the surge i think was 22 feet up uh, that far up the chesapeake it was uh yeah and downtown annapolis took a uh, quite a bit of damage i think they had 12 to 14 feet of tidal surge in annapolis it was pretty it was pretty uh eye-opening at this just to overall strength of just what that you know it, it makes you realize that you know you're not in charge <laughs> you know we we don't we're just a, a tiny tiny piece of of whatever is you know of whatever this universe is you know we're not and we're not it makes you feel very small and very insignificant but yet you're still a big part of this not a big part but a tiny part of this whole thing you know i mean the we humans will probably uh, die off at some point, but um, the Earth and the universe will still be going. We'll still be another, another form or another part of it, I guess. You know, just it's uh, it's impressive the amount of energy that comes out of these storms and just Mother Nature in, in general. I could only imagine. I definitely get motion sickness, so oh. to be at sea, it definitely is something that I have to prepare myself for. But to get to be in the middle of a storm, I would probably panic. So uh, I don't know how you did it, but I'm glad you survived it and are on the other side because that well, would be scary. <laughs> for for me, um, it's not one of those things where uh, during those times you really don't. You have certain actions that you take and certain safety things that you do, so you have to just kind of remain vigilant. And so you really don't have to. If you give yourself time to think, you'll probably start thinking, "What? What the heck? Am I, why, why am I here?" But um, 
but um, if you do, if you keep yourself busy and your your mind active, you know you you won't go to that panic panic space because I I think we can all we can all talk ourselves into that panic once you really start looking at the uh, you know the the impressive strength of one of these storms. So yeah, I I try not to give myself that time. <laughs> very wise, very wise. Um, well, another question I would ask you is, um, is there any um, setbacks or anything that you encountered in your career? And how did you overcome them? Obviously, you've overcome um, quite a bit on the yacht, but how have you done it in the multifamily space? Um, we had uh, some, you know, we've had uh, many, many things we've had to overcome. There's been, uh, you know, there was a, a deal I was raising capital for and it just didn't didn't work out. And that was earlier this year. Um, the guys that I was involved with, they ended up walking away from the deal because they, they couldn't come to terms. They were looking to retrade yeah. and the numbers didn't work out. So that was a bit of a setback, but, uh, there's a guy, David Goggins. He said, well, you know, failure is not a failure. He said, that just means you got to do another one. You got to do it again. <laughs> and I really like that. It's like, well, if you failed, do it again. You know, do it again. That just means you got to keep doing it until you, you know, get it right. You know, so, so I've taken nope. that advice. <laughs> so, in your opinion, I mean, what kind of key factors do you think will contribute to a successful investment that you want to be part of? Then, as you're looking at this, uh, for me, it's the team. Okay. That, that's the hundred percent the team. If the team is solid, then they can make a mediocre deal into a home run, make a terrible deal into uh, a great deal. They can make a, a terrible deal into a decent one. You know, it's really the team. Uh, and that's the same, you know, the same like I've reiterated before with, with the boats. It's the same thing. If you have a great team. The boat can be terrible. The program can be terrible. But if you have a great team, then you overcome. And then you generally have a good time doing it because everybody enjoys working with each other. So, it, you know, it's a, a good, uplifting, positive environment. Um, so another question I would have for you as well is, um, as you're in the industry of the multifamily, I um, needed from single family to multifamily, what are opportunities or challenges that you um, see that lie ahead? But are you preparing for yourself? Uh, that lie ahead. Um, opportunities, I think there'll probably be uh, some more deals coming up. It's just probably with uh, with uh, banks and financing and capital uh, tightening up. The challenge is going to be raising the money. Um, we're running into some challenges now with that, um, but it just there's still a lot of capital out there. But it's just a matter of connecting the people with the right deal. And, uh, it, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, the last couple of years, capital has been pretty pretty readily available uh, because with COVID, they pumped a lot of money into the system and people right. needed to do something with that money. And now the banks have tightened up with the interest rates being higher. You know, you're looking at 60 to 70 percent LTV, even even less sometimes for these loans. They'll still loan, but it'll be you know 60 percent LTV. So people are also having to bring more capital to the table, and the refinances you know are are, are falling victim to the same thing. I won't say falling victim. This probably a poor choice of words, but it's a are running into issues with that with uh, with lending tightening. So there's going to be probably a, a more uh, more of institutional capital and uh, private money coming in. You know, a lot more funds coming in uh, mm -hmm. because it, it's still multifamily. is still a great place to be. You know, it doesn't have the volatility. You know, during during the global financial crisis, multifamily was one of the few asset classes that did very well. It didn't, you know, just chug right along. It didn't really uh didn't fall out. They, you know, it. it came through a lot better than the single family market, you know. So over time, you know, with rents going up and, you know, prices of homes being where they are, 
um, there's uh, going to be a, a huge demand for multifamily over the next 10 years. I think, you know, once until we can build houses and multifamily a lot faster, I think it's still going to be a lack of supply issue. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I definitely think that uh, you're on to some there where there is a little bit of constraints. And, and I think that timing is really going to have an impact with the supply. So I do think there's going to be constraints for a while. But I always yeah. like to throw a little curveball, man. Here's my curveball, okay. Scott. I got to oh, ask love- you, where, if you had to say or recommend a good book or a movie, which one would it be and why? Uh, a good book? Uh, would be a book that I've read multiple times is uh, uh, Brian, Brian Burke's uh, Hands Off Investing because um, it, it it's kind of like a, I, it's a, kind of a go-to book when I'm having issues I'll go back to it because it's more for the the investor and as you know a multifamily syndicator we sometimes we forget that it's really about the investor like mm-hmm. we need to we they're they're the ones we're protecting they're the ones we're helping it, it we need to make sure that uh we're a hundred percent in their you know in their corner and we're we're there doing it for them and once we start doing things for ourselves and make it about us then we're not really doing we're not we're not we're not really providing service no, that's a great point well, thank you for that, Scott. So another question that I have for you is um, our company's motto is faith, family, and giving. Giving. Um, okay. These are three things that definitely resonate really strongly within our team. Can you share the impact of one of these areas within your life? Um, well, giving, I've, I've always said that uh, life is what you give, not what you get. And the more you give, uh, just the, the more it sets you up to receive. And, and, uh, you never know where it's coming from and because the the more you the act of giving is you don't expect anything in return if you're expecting something in return then that's a, a deal or as a contract you know it if you're giving it's just giving and uh i'm fortunate enough to be in a place where i can give back my time give you know money or what have you but one of my main focuses is to give other people the knowledge that they know that you know this is america there's a lot of opportunity you know and it, it, yeah. you know just by example or just if somebody calls me i'll gladly help them do you know think through whatever issues they're having because we've all been there you know everybody needs help sometime and you know that's why i started the meetup group because i went to a lot of meetup groups and there weren't necessarily a lot of them were trying to sell you something and they were all, you know, more about what, what they're doing and everything else. But I just kind of eventually went to a meetup where I met uh, one of my partners and she and I are still partners to this day that, uh, you know, it was just people getting together, talking about real estate, doing whatever. And I was like, this is what I want is to provide a place for people to come and just get together and, uh, talk about real estate and, and talk about just, you know, how they can help each other, you know, and, and that's, you know, cause there's power in numbers. The more people we get together, the more things we can do, the more people we can give to and the more knowledge we can give back and pass on to other people. No, that's uh that's, I couldn't put it better myself. Uh, I, I can really appreciate that kind of a mindset. I will hope more and more people as they're listening or, or out there uh, that that's uh, something that they can resonate with. Um, as we are kind of winding down our show, I, I always have a couple of last final parting questions, but the first one would be, um, Scott, if there's anything that we haven't touched on that you could share with our audience, um, what would that be it, it, that you could share with them? Um, you know, I just reiterate the meetup group and, and just, to, you know, just keep giving, you know, if, if, if you're stuck on something, just keep giving, you know, giving your time or, you know, putting yourself out there and putting yourself around these people that are doing things that you want. Cause it'll, it'll naturally rub off cause you'll naturally learn. And just by going to these groups or, you know, putting yourself in the room with other people, 
gain. Um, you gain that knowledge, and you'll you know, and 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 these people see you um, trying to do these things, and a lot of times they'll say, "Hey, no, wait a minute, I made that same mistake. Try this instead of doing one, two, three, four. Skip the one, two, three, and here's here's where I'm at four. Come with me at four, you know, and and that those kind of things will will really um, move the needle for you, you know, because I always thought that, uh, you know, I, I need to figure out how everything works. But until I rethought it a bunch of times and then read the book, Who Not How, I hey. made a conscious effort to find the who's in my life rather than figuring out how to do everything because we, none of us have time to do all of these hows. And we, we, you know, you drive yourself crazy doing that. But if you find it's the same thing, like if your house, if you, if if you have your, you know, if you're spending a couple hours cutting the grass, unless you enjoy doing that, pay somebody to do the grass, cause, do the grass, because that takes back a couple hours every weekend to mm -hmm. do that, where you could be spending two hours with your kids, you know, or two hours with your wife, or two hours, you know, working on a real estate deal, or anything something that's going to give you that time or even just two hours relaxing or sleeping you know because we all we're in that instant uh society and i, I don't know about you guys but uh being a parent and all these things that i keep taking on that uh i need to probably focus on sleeping more <laughs> <laughs> you know that is, I could tell you right now that that was probably one of the best lines that you could have ever told Brady because she's probably <laughs> herself. I could use a lot of sleep with three hundred. Oh, I, I bet you could with three little ones. You probably don't sleep at all, and but you know what you probably realize is, you know, I really don't need to sleep that much. <laughs> I, I used to love sleep, like, and yeah. everybody's like, you better have to sleep all the time you can because once you have a kid, there's no more sleep. And oh, boy, that's true that, statement. That is, Wiser words have never been spoken because once you have kids, you are not you. Your time is their time. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. these people that keep saying, oh, my kids sleep through the night. They've never had an issue. Oh. I get all the sleep. I'm like, who are your kids? Because I don't. <laughs> <have sleep." laughs> well, our, I remember our kids like you just put them down. And if you take that one finger off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, wow. well, yeah, <laughs> they do, so, so, we, the only way we could do anything is if you keep them up and rock and stand up and walk around. So it's like you're probably did, we probably did a thousand miles in the living room. I feel like even when somebody else is holding my kid, I feel like I still sway. Like I'm doing it with them. Yeah. Like I still have a constant motion, and I'm like, I don't even have a kid, but it's just constant. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> oh, it's oh, too much money. It's great. Well, well, Scott, I definitely want to say thank you so much for at least giving us a little bit of insight into your background between yachting and single family and multifamily. And then obviously your lovely two daughters, because I'm a father of uh, I'm a girl dad as well. So I can appreciate that. Um, but if our audience wanted to find you or wanted a way to connect to you, what is the best way that they can go ahead and do that? Uh, the best way they can find me is uh, investwithscottkid.com. It's my website and Yachty Real Estate Investors on social media. You can catch me there. LinkedIn is just my name, Scott Kidd. Oh, man. Well, that's great. And I, again, I can't thank you enough for joining us today on taking a leap into commercial real estate. And uh, I again, I, 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 I'm going to be smiling today because I had an opportunity to talk to another girl dad, especially about something that I could only dream of, which is yachting around in my for my career. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank, thank you guys for having me. It was, it was my pleasure. And, you know, uh, enjoy those girls because it's, it's truly, a, truly blessings. It, they really are. Okay. Thank you very much, Scott. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Thank you for joining us on the Taking the Leap into Commercial Real Estate Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to support us by subscribing and leaving a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 
And remember, the views and content shared on this podcast do not reflect that of Keystone Private Capital and Keystone Holdings. Creative Planning, LLC, Bergen KDV, Creative Planning, and Keystone Private Capital and Keystone Holdings are separate and distinct companies. Creative Planning is not affiliated with Keystone Private Capital, Keystone Holdings, or any of their affiliated companies and makes no claims, promises, or endorsements of any products offered by Keystone Private Capital and Keystone Holdings. Our views are our own and not those of creative planning. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next episode.